Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you all my absolute favorite products from Sephora in action. So I already did my Sephora VIP sale recommendations, but I wanted to show you these products in action so you could see how I like to use them on an everyday basis. This is just my favorite makeup from Sephora in every category. And I'm just giving you this soft kind of natural glam makeup look that I think is perfect for the summer and spring months that are upcoming. This is the perfect time to grab any of these items from the sale if you have had them on your wish list. Of course, please don't feel pressured to buy anything during these sales. There are so many sales that are coming up. There are gonna be so many videos. Don't feel pressured, only buy what is a necessity to you and don't buy just because people are telling you to buy things, basically. If you wanna see all my absolute favorite products from Sephora in action, just keep watching. Let's get started with complexion products. So my absolute favorite foundation at Sephora is this Prada Reveal Foundation in the shade MN40, that is my perfect shade. It is a medium neutral tone, I would say. Kind of falls in between a light medium, definitely more on the neutral side, and I just love everything about this foundation. Now I have to refill because unfortunately they were sold out in the full size when I went to buy it, so I just purchased the refill. And when I go and purchase this again, because this is a foundation I will repurchase when I run out, I will just repurchase the full size so that I can refill it. I like to just pump it out into the palm of my hand, and then from here, I will go in with my foundation brush. I like to use this Shiseido foundation brush. And I will just go over the skin. This is obviously quite a large foundation brush, so it's going to apply to a large amount of your face. So I like to just apply where I have a little bit more redness. So typically I start around the outskirts of my skin. And the last place I ever apply foundation is my nose because I just feel like the foundation looks the most obvious when it's on your nose. So I try, I try to avoid applying foundation to my nose as much as possible. At like the last second, I'll go in and touch my nose just with whatever excess product is on my brush just to ensure I don't have that makeup-y look on my nose because I feel like that's an easy way you can detect if someone's wearing makeup. But I typically find a pump of this foundation is enough for my full face. This definitely gives a medium coverage. It's a little bit fuller coverage than some of my other everyday foundations. And this gives a beautiful finish. It's like a true skin-like finish. It doesn't lean super matte or super glowy. It kind of falls right in between. On me, it's more like a skin finish, soft matte finish, but it's not flat matte. I can still see a little bit of a glow showing through. I can still see, even though this has a medium coverage, I can still see freckles showing through and a little bit of pigmentation, which is something that I just prefer on an everyday basis. And my favorite thing about this foundation is its blurring capability. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of foundations that blur the skin. I just think it's the most flattering. I never want to emphasize texture on my skin. I like everything to look really smooth and filtered and blurred. And this foundation gives you that smooth, filtered, soft focus effect without it looking like heavy makeup. It's not gonna look like heavy makeup sitting on your skin. This foundation just really does a great job of melting into the skin. Another thing I really enjoy about this foundation is its longevity. This is going to last me all day long. I'm not gonna have to touch up. It's not going to separate throughout the day. It's not gonna fade away. Sometimes with medium coverage foundations that do settle down to like a soft matte finish or more of a skin-like finish, sometimes you'll notice them fade throughout the day um, just because of that higher coverage. I, even though it's not, this isn't a high coverage foundation at all, but just something even with a medium coverage, you can notice those things, but with this foundation, it doesn't do that. It's just really, really beautiful. This Givenchy Prism Libre Concealer has just been really really a standout concealer for me i really really love this i especially like i said in my original sephora video i really like to use this all over the face especially when i'm like running to the gym this is just such an easy product to apply all over the skin and it truly just looks so skin like it's hydrating it's a really gripping concealer as well so i find that because this grips down onto the skin it's going to stay all day so it's a concealer that you can use all over your face and it's going to remain there all day it's not going to crease, it's not going to settle. I like to apply a little bit on my under eye region. If you guys wanna see a video where I use this all over my face and kind of show you how I would use this, like for the gym or whatever, I can do a video on that if you're interested. But I really enjoyed this. This is not a super light brightening concealer. I typically like to use concealers that are pretty close to my skin tone because I just don't like that contrast of a too bright under eye. I just feel like it looks a little bit too natural. This is the shade 
N250 and I really like it. So I apply a little bit out on the outer corner of my eye just to give my eye a little bit of a lift. I have a little bit of darkness on the outer corner of my eye and a little bit goes a long way with this concealer. This is, I would say like a medium coverage concealer and I really like that it has a skin-like finish to it. It doesn't lean again too matte. It doesn't lean too dewy. It's kind of that perfect in between but there's nothing shimmery about this concealer. Like there's not going to be any sort of illumination to this concealer at all. And like I said, it really grips down onto the skin. It has a thin consistency. It's almost like a serum consistency. And I just find that consistency works really great on my under eyes because it just smooths out and it's just beautiful. And then like I said, you can use this on the face. Uh, again, I do like to use this all over the face as sort of a foundation replacement. But I do have a little bit of post pigmentation right here from a blemish. I typically on an everyday basis, I honestly don't care if these show through. But I'm just going to show you how I'd cover it up. I just go in with a little bit of product on this area. Again, you could be more precise and use like a pinpoint concealer, but I'm kind of lazy. I'll just apply a little bit of product. And I find that the way this melts in to my skin, it doesn't look like I've applied like a thick layer of a concealer. Some other concealers you have to be very careful because they'll be obvious that you applied them to your skin. But this, it doesn't. I let this sit if I'm putting it on my face, maybe for about like 20 seconds just to make sure it kind of starts gripping onto my skin and therefore I'll get a little bit more coverage out of it. And again, it just blends right in and you don't get any of that demarcation from where I've applied that concealer onto my face. And it's just, it's a really nice all over concealer for your under eyes and all over the skin, which is just really nice to have a concealer that is multi-purpose in that way instead of having two different concealers that you use, one for your under eye and one for your face. This is just easy breezy. I love utilizing different textures on the skin to get a more skin-like finish. So I really like to use cream blush and then top it off with a powder blush just to ensure longevity. And I also feel like it gives a really nice skin-like appearance if you use the products in just very light, sheer amounts. I really have been loving the Patrick Ta Blush Duo, like I said in my Sephora video, but I feel like I've used it a few times. So I'm going to show a different product, and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand in the shade Pillow Talk, which is still available on the Sephora site. I believe this is a limited edition color, so I would get it while you can because it's truly unbelievable. So you do have to twist this. It says like on and off. You have to twist it on to get product out of this doe foot applicator, which, you know, not the biggest fan of this application, but you know, this is Charlotte Tilbury's kind of signature thing. I get it. It's a little bit different. I like to apply just a little bit to the palm of my hand. Again, if you apply it to the back of your hand, the pores will kind of absorb that product and you're going to find that you need to work with more product. Basically, you're going to need to just apply more product. I like to take a brush like this. It's really small. This is the Sonia G mini base brush. So it's really great with working with cream products. And this is a really nice cream liquid blush because it's a little bit sheer in pigment than some other liquid products. Like if you've ever tried like the NARS liquid blushes or anything like that, those are pretty extremely pigmented. They don't have this sheer quality to them, this sheer pigmentation to them, which this one has a bit of sheerness to it. So it just makes it a little bit easier to work with because when you're working with a liquid blush, they do dry down. This one you do have time to work with, but it does dry down pretty fast just because that's the nature of these liquid blushes. They do dry down onto the skin, but they don't dry down in a way where it looks flat matte or it looks powdery on the skin. It melts into the skin and you still get this beautiful skin like appearance. Like you can see, I applied a decent amount of uh, product to my hand, but the pigmentation I'm getting on the skin isn't severe. It isn't too much. So I really like that this is a buildable formula. And just this color is so perfect. This is the color I turn when I blush. This is the kind of color that I want to naturally peek through because I just feel like this sort of color looks really natural on my skin tone. This is such a beautiful neutral shade. So it's going to work with any sort of color that I'm wearing. If I decide to wear a colored clothing or if I decide to do a colorful eye, which I never do. Or, you know, if I decide to wear a bold lip, this is the type of blush that will just work with anything. And it's just so beautiful. I really love the finish of this and just how this looks on the skin. I do like to go in with a damp sponge and just blend out the edges. Because with anything, when you are applying a pigmented product onto your skin, sometimes you will get those edges because obviously you've applied your foundation and you've just applied a contrasting color compared to that foundation. And you will just get kind of, I don't want to say harsh lines, but you'll just get 
a little bit, it just looks a little bit obvious because you have this like white foundation compared to a pink color. So I just like to blend up the edges with a sponge or you could go in with your foundation brush and just go over the edges just to get rid of any sort of harsh line. So it just melds into the skin a little better. And like I said, this color is just so beautiful. It's like the perfect pinky mauve that just really flatters. I would say a majority of skin tones is just going to look really beautiful. This is just such a standout Charlotte Tilbury product to me, and I think it is worth the money. It is so, so good. Now from here, this is where I like to work with powder products. So I've been actually really enjoying using blush before any sort of bronzing product, just because I feel like if I apply my blush first, then I get a little bit of structure on my face, and then I don't need to go in with as much bronzer. So I'm gonna take this Givenchy, this is the Prism Libre Loose Powder Blush in the shade number two, Taffetas Rosé. And like I said in my Sephora video, this has four different quadrants of different shades of pink. So it creates this really beautiful light pink blush. And I'm just going to take this, this is a Ray Morris Deluxe Kabuki brush. And I just like to break up that pigment. I like to distribute a little bit of that product into the cap here. I will work that powder into this brush. As always, I'm tapping off the excess product to ensure I don't get too much pigmentation directly on my cheeks, making it harder to blend out. And with this, I just pat it onto the cheeks. So I am just kind of going like this. I'm not buffing this blush into the skin. This just gives a really beautiful flush of color. I feel like it just brings youthfulness back to the cheeks. It gives you a really nice brightness to your complexion. And it's such a beautiful formula. It's really, really finely milled for a powder, so it doesn't look powdery on the skin. It has like an ever so soft sheen, but without shimmer particles. If you guys know, I don't enjoy shimmer particles sitting directly on my skin, and this doesn't give any of that. It has like a creamy quality to this blush. This blush almost blurs into the skin. Like this is a very blurring blush, and it creates this creamy quality where it doesn't look like a powder sitting on your skin. This is just an innovative formula and I think it's worth checking out. It's a really pretty blush and they have come in different shades. Like you don't have to get a really bright pink. I think it comes in a more neutral shade, maybe number five, I believe. And it comes with some other pops of colors. Like there's a really cool toned baby pink and a coral. So there's lots of color options and I just think this is really beautiful. The bronzer I really love that's at Sephora is this Guerlain Terracotta Light. This is the Sunkissed Healthy Glow Powder in the shade 03 Medium Doré. I could probably have done a lighter shade. I'm kind of into lighter bronzers these days. So I probably could have done the shade number one just for a really beautiful skin enhanced look. But I really like to pick this up on a Sonia G. This is my Niji Pro brush. And I just like to get some product on the brush. And I really like this Guerlain bronzer because it is quite sheer in pigmentation. So it will go on in a light amount. So even though this is the medium shade, it does take a while to build up. It's a very buildable bronzer. It kind of has a sheer pigmentation. So therefore, not that you need a heavier hand, but it just makes this a little bit easier to work with, especially for a bronzer where I don't want a lot of contrast on my skin. This will just go on in a really soft and subtle way. And Guerlain is just known for their bronzers. They do a really beautiful formula. It's a typical powder formula, so it's nothing special. I just like having a Guerlain bronzer in my collection, just because I feel like they're the epitome of luxury bronzers. They're just very well known for them. And I do really like this formula in general. I have their other powder bronzer, which is just a typical matte powder bronzer. And it's like a completely just one color. This has different tones of bronzer shades and a blush shade as well. So I really like this on maybe days where I'm just going in with this Givenchy concealer. And then I can apply this bronzer over top and it kind of acts as my blush highlighter and bronzer in one. I can just apply it all over the skin and it just gives my skin a beautiful brightness because it has a little bit of that peachy tone to it. So therefore I don't need to go in with a bunch of product. And it just leaves my skin looking a little bit more natural. It's really pretty. And then I also just like to run a little blending brush. This is the BK Beauty 202 brush. What I will do with this is I will kind of create a little bit of a line here, just because I like when this is enhanced with a little bronzer right in that corner. And then I'll run a little bit of that through my crease as well. Just because I find that when I apply a little bit of that bronzer shade that I've applied all over the skin into the crease, it just looks a little bit more natural because those tones are running naturally throughout your skin already, all through your face. It just gives a really beautiful cohesive look. 
It makes everything come together and look a little bit more natural because those tones that are on your face are now in your eyes. It just makes the whole look come together and make it look a little bit more natural and beautiful. And the highlight, the Bare Minerals Gen Nude. This is the highlighting blush in the shade Opal Glow. It's marketed as a highlighting blush. I would personally not use this as a blush on my cheeks. I like to use this as an actual highlighter. So it has this beautiful pinky tone to it. Like I said, it's a little powdery, but not in a bad way. It's not chalky at all. It actually provides this beautiful sheen to your skin. So I'm just taking a bit on this Wayne Goss 17 brush. I like to use an eyeshadow brush as my highlighter brush for more precision. And I just don't like highlighter in such a large area. And oh, this is so beautiful. This is like the most glossy finish powder highlighter that I have ever tried. And I really enjoy this because this does have a little bit of a pink tone to it. So it blends right in with the blush and you're not going to get a streak of color. Sometimes when you apply, I mentioned this in my Sephora video, when you apply a highlighter, you can get this just like icy silver or champagne stripe. And it kind of removes the blush that you've applied underneath. Like it just looks like you have this icy stripe on your skin. And it like, it basically goes through the blush so that it looks like you're not wearing blush underneath because you're just noticing this highlight stripe. And I just don't find that insanely flattering on my skin personally. I know a lot of people like a bright highlight, but this blends in with the blush so that it just looks like you have a little bit of glow on the top of your skin. And like I said, this powder is so glossy on the skin, so it doesn't look like a powder at all. It just looks like you have a beautiful glow from within. I'm just taking a little bit of that down the nose. And yeah, there are no detectable shimmer particles to this, so you're not gonna see any glitter on the skin, you're not gonna see anything noticeable. It's gonna give you this beautiful, soft glow that is so natural and so skin-like. So if you're looking for a glossy finish highlighter that looks like your skin is just glowing, this is a really beautiful powder formula. And again, sometimes I find cream products a little bit finicky to use with, to use, um, just because sometimes they can remove the makeup underneath, you need to apply them before foundation. You need to just be very careful how you apply them. Sometimes they can just remove makeup and it can look a little awkward. Sometimes they can be a little bit sticky. But this, this gives you the appearance of what a cream does, but it's in powder form. So really recommend this. This has kind of blown my mind. I love it. I'm just going to do on my lips here. And I have been talking about these YSL Candy Glaze. These are the Volupte, Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze lipsticks in the shade. So I have number 15 here. I'll just go ahead and show that. These have a very, it's like a thick texture, so when you apply it, it feels like, almost like, kind of petroleum-like, but it feels thick on the lips. And it leaves a, actually a pretty decent pigmentation for this color. This is the shade number 15. I think it's called Showcasing Nude. So it's like, almost like a brown tone, rosy nude. But my favorite shade is the shade 02 which is, I don't even know the shade name, but O2. This is basically like clear lip gloss, I wanna say. So it's definitely a thick texture, and it just feels so hydrating on the lips. It is so, so good. It leaves a very glossy finish on the lips. So if you're looking for that thick texture that's just going to give your lips so much hydration and so much gloss, I recommend this. Some of you did ask if I still like the Too Faced. This is the Hangover Pillow Balm. I love this, but these formulas are completely different. This is a really thick texture and feels very glossy. This is a super thin consistency where you can almost barely feel it on the lips. It's just so thin and it glides over the lips. They're just completely different. So I really like this for almost a, the YSL. I really like because it almost gives you a lip mask feeling. It's going to remain on the lips a little bit longer because it kind of grips the lip, lips because it's so um, thick and I don't want to say tacky, but it does just kind of grip the lips a little bit more. And I would say this is even more glossy. This one I really like because it's such a thin consistency, so I don't even feel it on my lips. I like to use this if I don't even want to feel a product on my lip. I guess because this one's thicker, I might feel it on my lips a little bit more, but it's probably going to give me a little bit overall more hydration. Where this just feels so, so good on the lips, and I reapply it throughout the day because it's such a thin consistency. It really does give your skin a lot of moisture. So I thought I'd just talk about the differences between those. And then for powder, I'm going to take the Westman Atelier Vital Press Skin Care Powder in the shade Cram. I really enjoy this powder, especially because I have drier skin. So I'm going to take it on a mini cheek brush from Sony G. And I like to just dip in. And I'll tap off the excess as always. And then I just like to go. So this is quite a precise brush. So I can be really precise, of course, with my application. I don't like to apply powder all over, especially because that product foundation 
is a little bit more of a skin like matte finish. So with this, I can just be a little bit more precise with my powder application and get that powder exactly where I want it. And yeah, you don't need powder all over. Precision a powder application is probably my favorite because then you're not gonna have like a cakey foundation or a cakey face. You're just going to have powder in precise areas where you want your skin to look more matte. It's gonna give a blurring finish. This is a really great blurring powder as well if you are someone with more mature or dry skin because it's so lightweight, it does not look like powder at all. It is virtually undetectable on the skin. It doesn't really provide any color even though this has a little bit of a tint to it. I don't notice that I get any color payoff. It doesn't add any coverage. It's just a really beautiful powder. It will just take away that oiliness or greasiness and just leave you matte or it's not even matte, it's more of a skin finish in those areas where you just want your skin to um, have that blurred effect and also to take away the shine. Taking the Merit, this is the solo shadow in the shade of Vachetta. So, or Vachetta, I don't know how to pronounce it. I was trying to be all cool sounding. But I like to just take this on a, this is a Wayne Goss 18 brush. I don't believe it's still available, so let me use something different. This is the BK Beauty 205 brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit of product on the side of this brush, and then I always like to take off the excess, and then I'll work it onto the eye. So I'm just gonna apply this pretty much all over the eye. I'm gonna start in the outer corner, where I want the most pigmentation, and then I will blend it kind of just all over the lid, and then through the crease as well. But this is really pretty. I like to just work with a little bit of pigment at a time at a time because obviously this does have a decent amount of pigmentation to it. It's pretty easy to work with. If you're a complete beginner, I probably wouldn't recommend this, but you can just apply it all over and it does blend out pretty easily. I don't like to build it up though because then I do find it just gets a little bit too gummy, but you do have time to work with it and it does dry down like completely, so it's not going to move or budge throughout the day. And this makes a great base for another eyeshadow. So if you want to apply like a shimmer powder shadow over top, this makes for a really great base. It sticks really well. And again, you're not going to have any problem with this wearing all day long. If you're looking for something great for the spring and summertime that's not going to move or smudge or budge or crease, these are really, really great everyday shadows really long wearing. I'm gonna run a little bit of that under my lower lash line as well, just to get a little bit of color there. So I just went in with my mascara. I took the Dior 3D Lash Maximizer. This is the lash primer, and I cannot find my YSL Lash Clash brown mascara anywhere, so I just went in with the Gucci mascara in the shade black. It's still really beautiful. I would just prefer a brown mascara because it's a little bit softer. And then I also took the Hourglass Voyeur Waterproof Gel Liner in the shade Obsidian, and I tight lined I usually like to use the shade Cave, which is a deep brown shade, especially when I'm using the YSL Lash Clash in the shade Brown. They just meld really beautifully together and it gives a little bit of a softer look. That is it for this Get Ready With Me using all my Sephora VIB sale recommendations. These are my absolute number one favorites in each category, so I thought it would be helpful if you could see me just get ready using all of these products in action. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I would, of course, love to know your recommendations and anything you plan getting during the sale. I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.